right, hello there, thrill seekers. That song is called What Happens If You Play the Guitar Solo from Taxman Wrong. And that's our entertainment for the day. Uh, you can see FICO. FICO! FICO, say hi to the... Ah, he doesn't want to say hi. There's, there's Ziggy. Ziggy's limping again. He's got a problem with his left leg. Not sure what it is. So uh, I'm going to keep an eye on it. He, he limps off and on. Just... I don't know why. Uh, reasons unknown. We've taken him to the vet for it. Uh, the results were inconclusive. So, uh, yeah, we don't know why he's limping, so we're just keeping an eye on it. So, yesterday I said some stuff about levels of enlightenment, and I realized I confused at least one of my viewers, and probably more. So, uh, I want to try to... First, clear up some of that confusion, and then uh, and then talk about some stuff Dogen said and some other stuff. So here goes. So yesterday I talked about the what are they called? The four, the four levels of jhana or meditation, and then the four levels of um, Jesus. What the hell is it called? They are called technically the four states and the four stages of practice. So if you want to get confused, that's what they are. So there's there's this uh, stream enterer, uh, something something in our hot, and then there's the first jhana, second jhana, third jhana, and fourth jhana or jhana. And those two are two different things. And I, I probably conflated them because I was trying to give examples of the ways enlightenment is ranked in early Buddhism. Now, I also mentioned that Dogen wrote about this, and his writings about this appear in Book 4 of the Nishijima Cross, Shobogenzo, and it is called Shizen Bhikkhu, the Bhikshu of the Fourth Dhyana. And here is what Nishijima Roshi wrote about it. She means four, Zen means the, uh, represents Sanskrit word Dhyana, which is also Jhana which means zazen, or the state in zazen. Bhikkhu represents the Sanskrit word bhikshu, which means a Buddhist monk. Shizen bhikkhu, or the bhikshu who had attained the fourth state in zazen, refers to a monk who mistakenly thought that his own state was the state of an arhat, a Buddhist practitioner who has reached the fourth and ultimate stage, so there's a state and a stage, of practice. When he was dying, this bhikshu uh, monk an apparition appeared before this monk, something not usually seen by someone who has attained the fourth state in Zazen. So he felt that Gautama Buddha had deceived him, and because of his mistaken idea he fell into hell. Now, Dogen quotes this story as an example of the wrong approach to Buddhism. In addition, this cha in this chapter he warns strongly against the serious mistake of believing that Buddhism, Confucianism, and Taoism all teach the same thing. That's a real good summary of the chapter. And this is one of a few places where Dogen goes on a rant. And there's, there's one, um, let's see, one of the epic ones which I've written about in the book Don't Be a Jerk, I believe it's in Don't Be a Jerk, is his rant about how women are just as capable as men of attaining the Buddhist enlightenment. And that's in a chapter called uh, Bowing to That Which Has Attained the Marrow, Raihai Tokuzui. So he goes on this epic rant, and when I paraphrased it myself, I had to cut out several pages of it because he just basically says the same thing over and over and over and over. Another one of his famous rants is the one in, and I've forgotten where this one takes place, but it's in a chapter about various can't remember various concepts in early Buddhism, but he, he uses it as a, as a reason to go on a rant about how only a monk can attain enlightenment. And this I wrote about extensively in my book, The Other Side of Nothing, and I don't want to go into that here because that's not the subject of this, but if you want to read my opinions about that whole mess, uh, you can go read it in The Other Side of Nothing. And then this is another one of his rants, and this rant happens to be about uh, why or how Buddhism Buddhism is not the same as Confucianism, Taoism, and uh, what was the third one? Oh no, Taoism and Confucianism. So it's why Buddhism is not the same thing as Taoism and Confucianism. So 
in all of these rants, what he does is he just really hammers the point. He just goes, blah, 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 and he keeps saying it over and over, and he keeps making the same point over and over and over again, adding little bits here and there, but basically just repeating himself. And it's part of... You know, Dogen is difficult, and it's one of the most difficult things about Dogen is is these things. And this one that I'm going to talk about today, she's in Bikshu, she's in Biku, the uh, the Biku of the fourth Diana, the monk of the fourth Diana, is um, is an undated piece, which means that Dogen didn't consider it complete, probably didn't consider it complete, nobody really knows, but he had this tendency to put a date of completion on every piece that he wrote that he considered to be finished. This one doesn't have a date of completion on it, it only has a date of when it was copied by uh, one of his students, so we can think imagine that maybe he would have edited this edited this some or maybe he wouldn't have even put it out to the public you know we don't really know what these undated pieces are and it kind of reminds me of like I- i'm a big fan of Jimi hendrix and after Jimi hendrix died they well they still even uh, i think the last one came out about two years ago they still keep coming out with new Jimi hendrix albums and, and they do this by finding because Jimi hendrix sort of like dogan uh Jimi hendrix taped just about everything he did every rehearsal every jam session he just taped taped and taped and like dogan just wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote so after uh Both men died prematurely, and after they died, people found the little pieces that they left behind and then put them out to the public. So that's kind of what's going on here. In this essay, he doesn't really try to teach us about the the four states of dhyana or the four stages of an arhat or, or a meditator. He's just talking, as Nishijima Roshi says in his intro, about how this guy makes a mistake about them and falls into hell. And, and you just heard the story, and, and Dogen just tells the story, I think, two or three times in this, in this uh, essay. But he's, he's dying, and then he, he thinks he's the fourth stage, the arhat stage, the highest stage, and he's when he's actually in the fourth state. And then when he's dying, he realizes uh, that he's in the fourth state, and then he decides that that means the Buddha lied to him. It doesn't mean that he made a mistake, it means the Buddha made a mistake. And that is the, the sin of slandering the Buddha, and he goes to hell. Okay. But he, so he's not. He, he doesn't. He doesn't give us details about that. He doesn't seem to be teaching it. This is an argument I've had on another subject, in which uh, there's an essay in which Dogen talks I- I- about reincarnation, and he kind of gives some details about what happens to you after you die, and you go into this realm and you go into that realm. I've talked about it extensively on this channel, so you can go back and look at my earlier videos. But the point he's making is the point of you have to revere Buddha. Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. The Buddha is the Buddha, uh, the Dharma is the teaching, and the Sangha is the community. And so he's not really teaching you about the mechanics of reincarnation. He's using the old tradition about the mechanics of reincarnation to tell you why it's so important to to revere Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. The same thing he's doing here. He's using this story about the four stages and four states to tell you why it's a similar sort of mistake to mistake Taoism, Confucianism. Five minutes later. Sorry, I was getting drowned out by the helicopter. He's, he's using this uh, this to teach you why it's a mistake to confuse Taoism and, and Confucianism with Buddhism. So apparently... 800 years ago, back in Japan, and especially, Dogen says, in China, there were loads of people who said that Taoism and Confucianism were the same thing as Buddhism, or there's another thing that he cites where people say it's like a, 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 um, a pot that's on a tripod on a three, uh, well, it's like my, well, you can't see it, but my microphone's on a tripod. So it's like a tripod that holds up the, te- the, the, the great truth, and so you need all three, and if you miss one leg, then, then it all falls over. That was another teaching. And the reason this might be of interest to us these days is because a book came out recently, and I called it up on my little computer. Okay, here we go. 
A book came out recently called China Root by David Hinton. Okay, and I have not read China Root by David Hinton, but I I must have received at least five emails from people saying, "Have you read this new book, China Root by David Hinton? You really should read it. It's great." And I say to them, "I'm not really interested in reading China Root by David Hinton because it's it's based on the same idea that Dogen already refuted." And let me read you. The little blurb about the book、uh, *China Root*, a beautifully compelling and liberating guide to the original nature of Zen in ancient China by renowned author and translator David Hinton. Buddhism migrated from India to China in the first century CE Christian era,、uh, and Chan Japanese Zen is generally seen as China's most distinctive and enduring form of Buddhism. In *China Root*, however, David Hinton shows how Chan Zen. Was in fact a Buddhist-influenced extension of Taoism, China's native system of spiritual philosophy. Unlike Indian Buddhism's abstract sensibility, Chan was grounded in an earthy and empirically based vision. Exploring this vision, Hinton、uh, describes Chan as a kind of anti-Buddhism, a radical and wild practice aspiring to a deeply ecological liberation. The in- Integration of individual consciousness with the landscape and with a cosmos seen as harmonious and alive, and、uh, that so that's the deal with that book. But、uh, Dogen says they ain't the same thing. Now, I spent some time this morning, probably too much time, going over、uh, specifically this new translation of Shobogenzo, which is the、uh, Shoto Soto Shu Shumuto, that's Japanese for Soto Shu head. Office, something or other, like that、uh, version of this text, and trying to figure out exactly what's the deal. Why is he, what's the deal with airplane food? What's the deal? Why did Dogen think that Taoism and Confucianism were not equal to Buddhism? And as I say, it's a rant. So pulling the specific reasons out of that rant was like pulling teeth. But I'm going to give you、uh, a little bit of this.、Um, one of the other things he says here, and, and it, co- it goes by quick, and it's in passing, but I'm going to point it out, is that this is the chapter in which Dogen claims that the Platform Sutra, which is one of the most famous sutras in all of Buddhism, and which I did a video about. I don't know. Look it up a year or two ago.、Uh, is spurious,、uh, is no good, and it's no good. He says because it contains the word kensho in it, and kensho is another word for satori, is another word for a, an el- enlightenment experience, like one of these blasts of great enlightenment. And Dogen says that's how you know the Platform Sutra is spurious,、uh, is no good, is false.、Uh, now it's not clear, and some people have argued that. Dogen isn't saying the Platform Sutra in and of itself is false, but he's saying that the version that's popularly circulating,、uh, maybe in Japan in his day or maybe in China, is a no good version because it interpolates a, interpolates a lot of stuff that doesn't belong there. I'm going to leave that aside because the the thing is, Dogen quotes the Platform Sutra all over the place in other chapters. So I don't think he thought the Platform Sutra in and of itself was lousy, but maybe he thought a certain version of it was was lousy. So anyway, back to the point. Here is what I could glean of why Dogen said Confucianism and Taoism are not Buddhism. He says that they say things like right and wrong occur of their own accord, which to Dogen is a denial of causality, is a denial of karma. So they're they're saying there's there's kind of no right and wrong, and Buddhism has a very strong idea of causality and karma. And he says this a lot.、Uh, he says that the、uh, Confucianists and Taoists don't know the teachings of the three times.、Uh, He says they don't know the establishment of a single continent, let alone four continents, which refers to an old idea about the continents of the earth that was believed in his time, which we kind of know today is wrong. So who knows?、Uh, they deny the six heavens, three realms, and nine levels, and they also deny the three thr- three thousand realms. Go look those up. I looked them up, and I don't understand them. Um, they're ignorant of the path of liberation. They can't penetrate the question of whether the world is limitless or not. They cannot see atoms of matter. I'm not sure what he means by that, but that's what he says. 
uh, they don't know the duration of a kshana, and a kshana is the uh, smallest length of time there is, according to Buddhism. And the reason I snap my fingers is I think there's supposed to be 64 kshanas in the snap of a finger. Uh, uh, they don't know a single thought or mental state, and they do not teach great compassion. And he gives a kind of a story that apparently comes from some Taoist text in which some guy kills his parents, and they, they don't, he doesn't like that. Uh, some other quotes... A master of the past had said even Lao Tzu and Cheng Tzu, those are the authors of Taoism and, and uh, Confucianism, Cheng Tzu is another way of saying Confucius, uh, themselves never recognized the subject of attachment and the object of attachment or the subject of detachment and object of detachment of the small vehicle, that's early Buddhism, much less actual attachment and actual detachment. They, which means the Taoists and Confucianists, see as the aim the art of serving a lord and managing a household through loyalty and fili filial piety of merely one age. They have no preaching at all about future ages. Uh, they may be the descendants of nihilists. And Cheng Tzu, Confucius just said nobility and lowliness suffering and joy right and wrong gain and loss all these are the natural state all these just come by themselves and because Cheng Tzu neither knows fulfilling karma nor pulling karma nor understands the past and the future he is ignorant of the present how could he be equal to the Buddha Dharma and so on and so forth now trying to kind of make sense of this myself uh, my my sense is he's mostly upset about the denial of karma that he sees in Taoism and Confucianism. And he also kind of thinks they don't go as deep into some of these sort of mystical ideas that Buddhism teaches about. Your mileage may vary whether you like those or don't. But this question of whether Zen Buddhism is actually just Taoism in disguise and not really Buddhism at all has been much debated by many people. And as we can see, Dogen was aware of this debate even 800 years ago. So it's it's a long-standing debate that Dogen kind of finishes for us in, in his uh, piece of writing. But it's something that still goes on today, and people will say this, and, and this David Hinton is saying this in his book China Root, and, and a lot of people say this. To me, the question is somewhat similar to the question of, is American Buddhism influenced by Christianity? And if you're going to give a sort of big general idea, you'd have to say, yes, American Buddhism is influenced by Christianity, because people like me, well, I'll give you my own example, is that, and I've written about this in at least two of my books. I know it's in Hardcore Zen. It might be in Zen Wrapped in Karma or Sex, Sin, and Zen. I'm not sure, but it's in at least two of my books. I've probably talked about it on this YouTube channel, which is that I didn't realize how much of an American and how deeply influenced by Christianity I was until I started living in Japan. I just, there was a lot of ideas that were sort of there in my psyche that I just took for granted as being true or, or I, d I didn't even think about them. And I came to realize as I was living in Japan that, oh, those ideas are very Christian ideas, like really Christian ideas. In my case, in Sex, Sin, and Zen, I think that's where I wrote about it. I was writing about this idea of sex being sinful. Now, there's all kinds of stuff in Buddhism about sex, but it's all based on more of a practical application that if you want to follow the path of Buddhism very deeply, sex is a big distraction. And so that can make it sound similar to the idea of sex being sinful, but sex isn't sinful. It's a distraction. There's a big difference between a sin and a distraction. So it's not that sex is evil and does bad things to you, but it's a distraction from the meditative path, is what Buddhists often say. Dogen doesn't really say this, but well, I don't know. There might be some place where he does, but he certainly doesn't emphasize it to any great degree. But other Buddhists do, and so that's there in the, in the literature. 
and that's one of the things people can get confused about. The other thing I've noticed is that uh, this whole idea of engaged Buddhism tends to devolve into something very much like Christian charity. So people hear about engaged Buddhism and they relate it probably subconsciously to Christian ideas of charity and helping the the, the weak and, and, and all of this stuff, which is a big deal in Christianity, but not so much in Buddhism. So you can see where this is influenced uh, how Buddhists do their thing in in America. Does this mean that a hundred percent of American Buddhism is a hundred percent Christianity? It does not mean that. Do I hate people who ask rhetorical questions and then answer them? Yes, I do, but I just did that. See, Ziggy's, Ziggy's limping. I don't know if you can see him back there. Ziggy, come here. Ziggy, Ziggy, there you go. Come here. Come here, Ziggy. Come here, Ziggy. Come here, Ziggy. Come, come, come. You can probably see how he's limping. Anybody who knows dog behavior, maybe you can tell me. I don't know. I took him to two vets about it, and they couldn't tell me what was wrong. So probably nobody on the internet's going to tell me what's wrong based on a video. They took x-rays and stuff. So anyhow, uh, what was I saying? Uh, yeah, so... so you wouldn't say 100% of American Zen is 100% just Christianity dressed up as Zen. There's plenty of, of good Zen that's much more purely Buddhist and, and not, you can't help but be a little bit influenced by Christianity, but you, it's not saying it's the same thing as Christianity. I, I haven't read the David Hinton book, but just based on the blurbs I've seen and what people have told me about, it seems to be this idea of Okay, the, the Chinese people in general didn't really like these long, lofty, scholarly interpretations that were very popular in Indian Buddhism when it first reached China. Which, you know, I've tried to study this stuff, and I, I am with the Chinese people on this, so maybe Americans are similar. Uh, I just can't deal with it. It's just so long and so convoluted and so confusing that I can't wrap my head around it. And so, Buddhism in China, in the Zen form, becomes gets rid of all that stuff and starts being very direct in its teaching and teaching in very short phrases and, and kind of uh, koans are a good example of this where you try to truncate some deep teaching into a couple of sentences. That's kind of what's there. And maybe Taoists did that too. But to say that you're trying to... to say that adopting the style that the Taoists use is the same as adopting Taoism sounds like a, a stretch to me. Jesus, there's another helicopter. Let's wait. Much, much later. All right, so there you go. That's my rant about that. I think I've already gone on too long, and I've made the points I wanted to make, but I don't know if I've reached any sort of conclusion. I guess my conclusion is that I don't think that Zen Buddhism is just Taoism in disguise as Buddhism, and... You know, I should also say that w w the main reason I'm not that interested in reading China Root is I hate re <laughs> I hate reading Buddhist books. God, I hate saying that because I write Buddhist books and I want to encourage people to read my books. But gosh darn it, it's like it's like work to me. And if there's some aspect of Buddhism that I'm not particularly interested in, then I'm not going to read a whole darn book about it. So, you know, maybe one of these days I'll pick up the Hinton book and, and look at it, but just the, the main thrust of it sounds like, uh, come on, you know, this is something that Dogen dealt with 800 years ago, and I don't want to, I don't want to read a whole book about it. So there you go. So there you go. There's my intolerance to this poor guy's book. I'm not saying it's a bad book because I haven't read it. It might be a great book. Maybe it would convince me. Probably not. But anyway, that's the deal. So if you want to contribute to me being able to buy a copy of David Hinton's book, you can go to the URL that you're seeing on the screen below, which is hardcorezen.info slash donate. That is hardcorezen.info slash donate. That's where you will find links to my Patreon and PayPal uh, account. There are also links, if you don't want to go there, in the description below if you're watching this on YouTube. So you don't even have to go to that URL. Uh, so there you go. Uh, those are my main way of making a living. And as always, I appreciate your support, but you don't got to support me if you don't want to support me. All right. That's all. We will see you next time. Have a good time all the time. Bye. All right. Hi, Ziggy. How you doing? 
I'm really worried about that leg of yours and why you're limping. But you seem to limp and for a couple of days, and then you stop limping, and then you're all right for the next few months. I don't know what the deal is. But anyway, we'll see you later, Ziggy. Let's go get a shot of FICO too, okay? Is that FICO? Can you see FICO? I don't know if you can see FICO. I think I'm pointing the camera at him. Anyway, that's the other dog that we're looking after, my sister-in-law's dog. There he goes. Bye, FICO.